Carlos Poposa Lima considered the guitar to be a universal instrument, and throughout his life and his career, he definitely showed us how universal it actually could be. So this video is going to be a video about his life, his career, and his music. So thanks for watching, and let's get started. So Carlos Poposa was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil in 1944, and he started playing the guitar only at age seven. And how he started doing that was because his dad, who actually wasn't a musician, wanted to learn how to play the guitar. So he started taking lessons himself and he would pass on what he learned to his son, who as I'm sure you can guess, picked up on it pretty quickly. After only two years of lessons, he was introduced to the guitarist Luis Bamfa. If you guys don't know who that is, he was a well-known Brazilian guitarist and composer. You might be familiar with some of the music that he wrote. He wrote the music such as Manha de Carnaval and Samba de Orfeo, which is featured actually in the movie Black Orpheus, which was released in 1959. Of course, Carlos, being as amazing as he was, started doing concerts only at the age of 12, and by age 13, he actually had his first record released. As I'm sure you can guess, the first record was released in Brazil, and I'm not even going to try to put you the name for this one, so the name of the record was this over here, and the album artwork looks something like this. If you can find any recordings of this online, I would highly recommend for you to check it out, because I'm sure it's awesome. Shortly after this, he went on to become a full-time touring musician, only at age 15, and he was just touring all around South America, playing concerts. A few years later, in 1967, he gave his first New York City concert debut, which was so successful that it actually upped his career that much more. And he was able then to tour all over the United States and all over the world, pretty much. But in 1968, he went on to actually study guitar with Andre Segovia in Spain for two years. Once he returned back to the United States, he just went on to do what he was doing before, which was just playing concerts, and he started even teaching at Carnegie Mellon for five years, from 1974 to 1979. It was around this time that because he was so successful, that even big-name composers were starting to reach out to him to want to work with him and just write music for him. So somewhere around the 1980s, he moved to New York City, and that's where he stayed for a little while. While he was there, he was actually teaching at the Manhattan School of Music, and while he was teaching there, the other teachers on staff were Manuel Waco and Sharon Esmond. Since New York City was kind of a hub for all things music, while he was in there, he also got to get well acquainted with Antonio's Carlos Jobim and the jazz guitarist Charlie Bird. It was through his connection with Charlie Bird that he was actually able to get set up with the head of Concord Records, and Concord pretty much signed him on the spot for an 11 record deal. So they must have been pretty impressed with what he was doing. Antonio Carlos Jobim, who you might know as one of the most famous Brazilian singers and guitarists, was so impressed with him he had this to say about him. Barbosa Lima brings an ear attuned to counterpoint and technique that gives each independent line its own voice. His transcriptions find and define every moving part in bossa novas and counter melodies together as he does with Gershwin. He even sounds like a team of guitarists. Another well-known figure in the music world that was very impressed with him was guitarist and composer Leo Brower, and he had to say this about him. When I unknowingly walked by a hotel room and heard guitar music, I thought I was listening to a guitar duo. And then suddenly recognized the music and I realized it was Carlos Barbosa Lima playing solo. If I weren't a guitar player and a guitar composer who noticed a mistake by one of the violinists during rehearsal of a 70-member orchestra, my confusion could have been justified. I believe that Carlos Barbosa Lima is a genius of transcriptions of Latin American music for the guitar. In 2015, he was awarded the Guitar Foundations of America's Hall of Fame Artistic Achievement Award. So here are a few things that he did that I think helped him get the award. So in this portion of the video, I'm going to be talking about some of the things he did in his recording as well as his concert career. And the first thing I'll say is that his recording career as well as concert was very, very interesting. Because his music ranged from anything from Bach and Scarlatti to Gershwin and Joe Beam to Debussy and modern composers such as Hina Serra. And we'll get into all that in just a few. Wait, didn't you say that he was a classical guitarist, and wasn't some of that music that you mentioned jazz music? So yes, he did play a lot of jazz music, and even though I don't consider him a jazz guitar player in the same way of somebody like Charlie Bird or Wes Montgomery, he did play a lot of the jazz music on solo guitar very, very convincingly, even though he didn't know how to improvise. Now, throughout his time as a recording artist, he actually collaborated with guitarists of various styles, people such as Bird Rojas, Laurindo Meida, Charlie Bird, and Sharon Isbin, just to name a few. But to me, what made him more interesting is that he didn't only collaborate with just guitar players. He collaborated with vocalists, drummers, bassists, percussionists, and even string quartet players. And when you heard his music, he had a wider range of music from classical to jazz to Latin American, and even very traditional Brazilian music that most people don't even play or record that much. And he made it so that music had another life again in a different context. 
So now you see why he was able to have so many different records. Some say he even had over 50 recordings because not only did he have records under his name, but he also was a guest with many orchestras, string quartets, and just artists all around the world. Now, the last thing I'll say is with the discography of music from all around the world and from all different time periods, you can bet his concerts were very interesting. And that's exactly what people would say. When you went to a Carlos Barbosa Lima concert, you had no idea if you were going to hear music from Gershwin, from Joe Beam, from Debussy, to Bach, to Scarlatti, to Albanese, to David Brubeck, or pretty much much anything else in between. Now, the last part that I want to talk about for him is going to be not only his music contribution, but also his arrangements and publication contributions. He is known to be one of the biggest arrangers for the classical guitar. Honestly, I want to say in history. It said that even back in like 2005 or 2006, he actually had over a thousand arrangements and he wrote many more since then. Unfortunately, many of his arrangements weren't actually published because he made them only to be recorded in the studio or to be played in concert by himself or himself and others. But as I'm sure you can guess, there were so many and I wish we had access to all of them. But with that being said, there were tons of books and arrangements that were published. Some of them include studies such as arpeggio studies and etudes. Some of them were books with his own compositions for students and professionals. Some of them were books that were more like instructional books that talked to you about how to play different Brazilian styles or how to play different even styles of Latin American music because that was something he was very well versed in. And of course, he had tons of books on arrangements of music by Joe Beam, Scott Joplin, Albanese, and all that stuff. So definitely check some of those out. I'll try to link some of them down below, but you can just go on Google, on eBay, on guitar sites and look for them. And hopefully you can start playing them because some of them are really good, but some of them are really hard. So back to when I was first getting into classical guitar, one of the things I did was I went to a guitar seminar and one of the artists on the panel was Carlos Robos Lima himself. And one thing that I remember so clearly is there was kind of like a faculty slash artist panel of all the guests talking about different guitar players and all this stuff. And one story that one of them told is that one time they were on a festival with Carlos Robos Lima and in the festival they were going to play one of his arrangements in concert and they had to get together to do a rehearsal obviously of course before the concert. And Carlos Robos Lima was a little bit late and the reason why he was late is because he was finishing up an arrangement that they were going to practice that day and then perform that night. He was just always arranging and he always had new ideas that he wanted to share with the world. And I just want to share that with you because it was a pretty interesting story and it just shows how he worked and how he was always writing and always creating music. Now, the last thing that I want to share is outside of being a guitar player who has his own books and arrangements published, he was also making tons of connections with big name composers. The most notable one would be his connection with Alberto Hinastero, who actually dedicated a guitar sonata to him, which ended up being known as the Hinastero Sonata Opus 47, as I'm sure as you know, is one of the biggest staples in the classical guitar repertoire today, and it was dedicated to Carlos Robos Lima. So if you saw the thumbnail to this video, as I'm sure you know, unfortunately, he is no longer with us. He passed away on February 23rd of 2022, and it definitely is a great loss for the guitar community. And because of that, I wanted to make this video just talking about his life and his music, and somebody that I wish I really got to know more of his music when he was still alive and gotten a chance to see him more in concert. But I will say, after doing all the research for this video, I am very, very thankful he left so much behind for us to listen to, to play, and to just appreciate. Anyway, that's all for this video. If you guys are new here, hopefully you liked what you saw. This was the first video in my series where I talk about different guitar players and maybe eventually composers, and this one seemed only fitting with the timing. Hopefully you want to see more videos like this, and if you do, go ahead and check them out in my profile down below. Subscribe if you like what you see to help the channel reach more people, and that's pretty much it. Thanks again, and I will see you guys in a future video.